council meeting uh, went very well on Monday, and we covered a lot. We're moving forward in, a, in exciting and in innovative ways. But it did come up that we are aware that people want to gather again in person. Um, inside the sanctuary. We know that we all want to be together again soon. But we are monitoring the rising transmission rate that's going on in our area. We are hopeful to be able to gather together again, whether it's in the education building or in the sanctuary. We're hoping for the fall. We're hoping for September. You know, and to be able to spread out, see one another. We all want this. But we are, for now, continuing in this way. As the weather permits, we will be outside for the summer. We are forever now, as, as able, going to live stream our services because we now have equipment that's going to be installed, and this is something we will continue to do. Uh, but for now, folks, it's in the, everyone's safety that we continue to gather as we are, live stream, outside. We, again, are hopeful for the fall, but we're just going to have to monitor the situation. And we certainly understand um, if, if you want to visit other churches, we have other churches worshiping with us. This is a very innovative time during the pandemic, and as pastors, we can all see how this is actually bringing congregations together uh, when we meet in our, in our weekly meetings. So again, if you visit another congregation, whether you're traveling or whether it's local, just give a call first. Just make sure they can accommodate uh, to keep safe practices. So let us now prepare ourselves for the brief order of confession and forgiveness. I uh, invite those who were able to print out the bulletin at home to follow along with us. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. by all the word of by what we have done,
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Deacon Betsy will now read for us from Psalm 86, followed by Paul's letter to the Romans. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I will thank you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forever. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the pit of death. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent people seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. The second reading, or the reading, is from Romans chapter 8, beginning at the 12th verse. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to flesh, to live according to the flesh. For you live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we offer with Christ so that we may be glorified with Christ, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory of that to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will set us free from bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. We're going to have our gospel. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The dominion of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed seeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and were grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus left the crowd and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. 
Jesus answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of God's dominion. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his dominion all causes of sin and all evil doers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the dominion of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Peace. Truth and love to you and through you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So, are you wheat? Or we? When you hear the parable, do you stand firm in your truth that you are we? And then perhaps move your thoughts to those individuals that you perceive to be as the we's? Stay careful now, if so. Because well, remember what we said last week about Jesus and his use of parables. As rhetorical tools, they're meant to till or tease the mind into new thought patterns uh, that we might understand God and God's ways and God's kingdom better. The truth of the matter is, we are all both. We are all weak and weak. No one, no one should rush to judgment of another person. Only God has the power to judge. God has the power to save. Only God. And Martin Luther looked it up time and time again, right? That we are all simultaneously saved and sinned. And we hold we and we's together in our hearts, each in our own respective field of life. And although Matthew does use really tough words in his writings of when he's speaking about good and evil, holding people to strong account, Matthew does. We know that it's in our benefit to surround ourselves with people who radiate fruits of the Spirit, right, from the, the planted seeds of the gospel message. But we do not have a right to judge another person's heart. Only God does. We are called to do our best to till, right? To be good soil as best as we can, study God's holy word, receiving the holy sacrament, to be transformed by the Holy Spirit, receive the gospel message, in turn help scatter the seeds of good news as we ourselves grow in faith, helping others to grow in faith. But we are not to fall into some false sense of illusionary perfection that we know it all, rushing to judgment of another soil, of another's produce. Again, only God knows one's true heart. There's a retired pastor that shares the story of a young teenage girl that he confirmed. And after confirmation, he would see her every Sunday in the balcony with her friends, giggling, passing notes, during his sermons, pretty much throughout the whole worship service. And he used to fall into judgment, he admitted, thinking, oh, she wasn't hearing any of the gospel message for the seeds to take root in good soil. And somehow she was bad soil, if you will that it wasn't going to take root in her heart. She was too busy carrying on and goofing around. Well, years later, after she graduated college, she returned to the church, and the pastor asked to meet with her because he was concerned, knowing that her father had recently died. 
And as he sat with her, she said, you know, Pastor, I miss him so terribly. But I find comfort and solace and hope in remembering everything that you shared in your sermons, that you shared about God's grace and God's love and the promises of Jesus and our redemption and resurrection and everlasting life, that knowing that she would see her dad again with Jesus, she, she found comfort in that and comfort in the gospel message that he had shared with her. So she had, in fact, been listening all along, hadn't she? Again, only God knows what's going on in someone's heart. And God has the power to move all of us in extraordinary ways. And we are to do our best not to judge because in understanding ourselves to be we and we, we do maintain a capacity to love others in a very special way. In not thinking too highly of ourselves, thinking that somehow we're blindly perfect or right, and at the same time, in not beating ourselves up, right? That we're too hard on ourselves, dismissing ourselves as something terrible. We accept and forgive what is the reality that it's a mixed bag, right? We're a mixed bag, and we don't want to be angry people. But people are able to grow together alongside one another. And we grow then in patience, and we grow in compassion, and we extend forgiveness, and we extend love to offer the same graces to ourselves that Jesus calls us to offer to others so that we too may know joy and happiness, not binding our own selves to our own evils. You see, not to be discouraged, but living in hope, living with an honest acceptance of imperfection. We're not perfect. None of us are. And, and let us all do our best to grow together in that imperfection and not fall into judgment and loving those near us despite what we perceive as their faults. Only God has divine perfection, right? And God will perfect us all, all of us, God's children in that final harvest. Now that doesn't mean we aren't to call out abusive acts, right? We are. We're to call out the bad behaviors, the abusive acts, the evil acts. In that responsibility of loving others, we are called to advocacy. We are called to action, to strive for equity for all people. What is the acts? Right, it's the acts. It's the actions, the hurtful actions, the bad behaviors we are called to criticize this repudiation of evil, right? Not one's own heart, not one's own soul. We don't know what's going on in that person that's causing them to do what they're doing. So in the meantime, before the final harvest, when we're all made perfect with Christ, let us grow broken together, right? Choosing love over choosing what we perceive to be right and true. The only true perfection available to us, by us, is the honest acceptance of our own imperfections, acknowledging that we are saint sinner, we need, and by God's grace and mercy alone, we will one day shine in the dominion of the Father. Praise God. children's sermon now and pretty much touch on the same thing but in a, in, in a different way. I have these two chocolate foil coins here. If you were here I was going to give you some. I haven't 
I could do this. <laughs> Pass out to the ministry. But they look the same, don't they? Don't they look the same? What if I were to tell you one of them had sugar and one of them did not? If I were to say one was sugar-free and one of them was not, you really wouldn't know by looking at them, would you? I mean, you could you could try to taste them to see the difference. You might be able to tell, you might not. But really, the only one that would know is the maker of the chocolate point, right? So it's kind of the same for us. Only God, our maker, knows what's truly going on in another person's heart, in our heart. Only God knows. And so we can share our feelings to let people know what we're feeling. But even sometimes we're not even in touch with our own feelings. But God knows each and every one of us fully and completely. God, our maker. So it's important that we not think that we're ever better than anyone else. That we don't make fun of anyone else. We can certainly tell them if something they're doing is hurtful, um, encourage them to stop. But they themselves, you know, we're not to, as we say, judge, meaning elevating ourselves, uh, thinking we're better than the other person. Because God loves us all, and we're all made in God's divine image. And we can all help one another. To, to do the things that God would want us to do, but not to be mean. Uh, let us always focus on love and kindness and compassion. Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for making us the beautiful people that we are made in your image. Please help us to be more beautiful every day by being kind and loving to others and ourselves as you want us to be in your name we forever pray. Amen. Our band will now bless us with their gifts with an anthem.
repeating the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life of the Lord. Deacon Kent will now lead us in our prayers of intercession. Confident of God's care for us, in the midst of the world's sufferings, we join together in the power of the Spirit to pray for the church, the earth, the world, and all who are in need, responding to the words, teach us your way, with the phrase, you are full of compassion. God of church, we praise you for sowing the good seed of the gospel throughout the world. And we mourn that at this time many Christians cannot assemble to nurture one another for growth in the faith. Tend your people. Support bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Give us strength through your word. Lead seminaries to plan appropriately for the fall semester. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of the earth. We praise you for a wondrous creation, and we mourn that many lands and seas are groaning for rebirth. Nurture our green spaces and national parks. Send rain where there is drought. Protect endangered animals from poachers. Show us how to care for your earth and its creatures. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of the nations, we praise you for the good that has been given us in this country, and we mourn that many people here are poor and dispossessed, that we have allowed racism to distort our society, that violence breaks out in our land. Lead us to form communities in which all people are equal and where disputes are settled without violence. Save us from preserving a past that has been harmful to many. Bring an end to warfare around the world and mend the torn fabric of mankind with your truth and mercy. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of humankind, we praise you for wherever health and happiness prevail, and we mourn that many people suffer. Each day, thousands more contract the virus. Renters are facing eviction. Medical workers are exhausted. Some of the sick have no access to health care. Countless people are broken by sorrows. Open our hearts to your children who suffer in any way and show us how to serve them. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of the seasons, we praise you for summertime and we mourn that this year many hopes and expectations are denied. Give relief to those who suffer from the heat. Protect travelers from infection. Guard our children. Give rest to those with no vacation time. Hope to those who are unemployed. And patience to all who must endure this difficult time. O oh God, teach us your way. You are the of protection. God, you are Abba, our loving Father. You are our sovereign of our lives, our redeemer the rock on which we build. Hear at us as we offer the petitions of our hearts. O oh God, 
Teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of eternity, we praise you for all who have died in the faith, especially this week, the apostles Mary Magdalene and James. We mourn our own beloved dead. At the end, bring us all into the shining light of your presence. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you all. And also with you. I want to thank you all for continuing to support our ministry here at St. John's as we proclaim the gospel in word and deed through our worship services and mission outreach. Uh, thank you again for supporting the Indian Ministries and helping the Navajo and Hopi Nations. With the COVID situation, thank you for your donations to the food bank and milk fund. Thank you, Kai, for lifting up the, the, the children's feeding ministry this weekend. Um, it's important that we all help one another um, near and far. And because we are truly blessed in being able to receive the abundance of God's gifts and in turn sharing that with others in love. And our giving, our tithing, it, it, uh, it does glorify God. It supports the church, the mission of Jesus Christ, as we all, each one of us, do our part in helping to build up the kingdom of God here on earth. So may God continue to use us all. Uh, what we gather, what we're able to give, uh, in feeding the community and the entire world with God's message of love for the glory of God. Amen. Please pray. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be your honor and glory forever. Let us pray together now as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, Lord,
in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks God. God. Thank God. Thank you.